Up next on Coastal Today, students gain a competitive edge in the business world. CCU gets ready for the holidays with festive music and a spirit of giving and Civil War history from under the sea. Now your host, Robin Russell. Hello and thanks for joining us. Top CCU students are on track for high-level careers in major U.S. and international organizations. The Wall Fellows Program has a proven track record with bright shining students landing internships and jobs in companies like Citigroup, Deloitte & Touche, and Barclays Capital. Brittany Higdon and Zachary Burns are Wall Fellows here to share their experiences and hopes for the future. Welcome both of you. Um, Brittany, I think you and Zachary both are seniors, so it's been a while since you were inducted into the Wall Fellows Program. Um, think back to that very beginning and, and tell me what, what your first impressions were to join such an incredible group. I was really thrilled when I got in. I honestly didn't expect to, and ever since joining, it's been the greatest experience that I've had since joining Coastal. It's really um, had me build my skills that I already have and work on my weaknesses. So, I mean, it's, it's been a great experience. Um, Zach, one of the perks is to do a little traveling. Um, tell me what kind of things you've gotten out of this program in, in the way of global traveling. Well, one of the things for the Wall Fellows program is that going into your senior year, the summer, you go on a Europe trip where <laughs> it, it's pretty exciting because the Wall Fellows group, we actually get to actively plan the cities that we go to, the different countries and the businesses that we get to see. So one of the highlights was we got to go to Brussels to see EU and we got to go to um, Switzerland as well. Wow, tell me some of the things that you took away from there. Just understanding that what we're learning in the classroom does apply. One of my international classes talked about globalization and yeah. on paper it was pretty hard for me to see but then when you see just how integrated the markets are and how knowledgeable everyone is in Europe and how everyone in the United States, how everyone comes together, it's just, it's, it's a breathtaking experience. How exciting. Um, you've seen other classes now being inducted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, tell me how you feel about that. It's really exciting seeing the Wall Fellows program grow over the years. We're coming up on our 20th year being a program at Coastal, and it's great seeing each year how we, and we get to go through the interview process and interview, so we're part of the decision making of them becoming a wall fellow, so it's great to see them become part of the, the group. Um, and another, well, you guys have exciting things happen all the time, but um, something really exciting is getting ready to happen. Um, tell me who you're getting ready to go see, Zach. Coastal Carolina was actually selected as one of the five schools along with Harvard and Stanford for a few names to go meet Warren Buffett. And also we're going to go visit TD Ameritrade, which Coach Mowgli was the yes. president and current chairman of the board. And we're going to be meeting up with one of his friends, the CFO, Bill Gerber. Okay, when you heard that, <laughs> what did you do? I was thrilled. I couldn't believe that we were invited to go. We're going with a bunch of the graduate students from Coastal, and then they also wanted to take a few select undergraduate so they're taking the wall fellows as well and it's just a once in a lifetime opportunity to meet Warren Buffett and to hear his story. Um, do you get to talk to Warren Buffett? Yes, we actually do you sit have down. questions that you're going to ask him already? <laughs> yeah, just to make sure that everyone's ready to go and to meet Warren Buffett and to, to meet Bill Gerber, we actually have seminars that we're going to each Friday to help prepare us. We have readings, we have different speakers that are coming in. Our first meeting actually was last Friday when Coach Moglia came to talk to us yeah, and yeah. hopefully he's given us a few one-uppers. Well, that is so, so exciting. I, um, I want you guys, will you come back after the meeting? Yes, of course. Um, what, are you, what are your plans after school? Well, I'm actually going to be finishing up college in three and a half years, so my full 120, and I have an internship coming up with Crow Horwath. So that, that'll be in Manhattan. So I'm hoping that I go there for three months, secure a secure position with the company. And, and you'd like to stay in Manhattan? I would love it. I would love to do great. that. would be great. How about you? Um, in the spring of this year, I'm going to be interning with the Washington Internship Institute, and I'm currently applying to some federal government agencies to line up an internship there. Um, fabulous. Brittany, Zach, what an example of two excellent students. Thank you so much for joining us, and we look forward to following you all the way out the door <laughs> and in the future. Thanks for having Thank us. You. Thank you. Up next on Coastal Today, it's time to pull out your calendar and mark some of the season's best holiday musical events. Presented by CCU, of course. And later, the spirit of giving is alive here at CCU. Learn how a student is organizing the coastal community to feed families on Thanksgiving.
Coastal Carolina University basketball is coming soon, and the Shauna Clears are poised for success with a schedule that features 17 home games at the HTC Center, including SEC champion Ole Miss November 16th. Support head coach Cliff Ellis and the Shots as they pursue a Big South title. Season tickets start at just $100, less than $6 per game. Call 347-8499 or visit GoCCUSports.com to order your tickets today. Coastal Carolina basketball, the Grand Strands college team. Let's go, Coastal! This is a movie set, and my acting career began at Coastal Carolina University. Begin your path to prominence today by applying online. Welcome back to Coastal Today. In a few weeks, we'll usher in the holiday season. You may not realize it, but there are many chances to enjoy the music of the season and other great performances presented by CCU's Department of Music. Philip Powell chairs the department here with Terry Sinclair, Director of Choral Activities. Welcome both of you. Thank it's you. always Thank a pleasure because I know you've got something fabulous to share with us. And first, Terry, you, 14th annual um, holiday concert. I don't believe it. How about that? It's a long tradition. It's yes, been. and better and better and better. And the houses are more packed and more yeah. packed. Um, yeah. What's in store for this year? Well, this year we are back at the First United Methodist Church of Conway mm -hmm. for the concert. So we have sort of gotten into a tradition of taking that concert out to the community. And so they're very gracious to host us every year. So. Absolutely. And of course, the choirs are involved this year, both the concert and chamber choir. But also this year, our brass quintet, brass ensemble, are going to share the concert with us. And so they will be um, playing, we hope, a couple of selections on their own. Right. They will be playing a, a set of three pieces by Mac Wilberg, uh, three American carols. Um, they will be playing those along with percussion and organ. And uh, Mr. Billy Fallow, who's the director of music at the church, will be our organist for that. So as usual, we will have a certain number of pieces that are a little bit more on the classical side. Yes, yes and then we will have some things that the audience can sing and tap their toes to some more familiar holiday selections and ending with the hallelujah chorus as uh, usual. When do you guys start working on this? Well, we actually <laughs> just started right after fall break yeah, yeah. and we uh, prepare that for about seven weeks wow. and um, we're ready, ready for prime time hopefully by December the 3rd. Amazing. And Philip, I, I believe in December, it seems like there's a performance every night. Sometimes we have two performances in a day. Okay, uh, it's amazing that we've got that much talent around here. I'm so proud of the entire department and Absolutely. the growth in the whole department to be able to mount so many different performances. It's pretty exciting. Um, tell us some of the highlights. Well, um, as soon as the annual holiday concert is over, yes. we start immediately with building up for the, uh, the, the uh, Honor Band Festival which uh, the, the band folks do. And this, the, we start with a concert by the symphonic band, and then we have uh, a faculty recital on Friday, the a Friday Ooh, afternoon. Wow. So we've got a variety of faculty that participate in this. And we've got high school students from all over the state that come to Coastal, and they do workshops, they, um, they rehearse, and they will give a concert uh, on Saturday at uh, two in the afternoon. Right. So in the middle of, sort of bookended, with the the uh, Coastal Honor Band concert and then the Symphonic Band concert, we have the faculty recital and then we have the Spectrum concert as well. And that's where all of our ensembles, you know, do this parade My of. Concert, right? It's yeah. really cool yeah. because they just do a, a, it's like a parade of of events and uh, one right after the other, and it's a pretty exciting, a very diverse evening. 
So we hope that that will give a, a nice experience for all these visiting high school students that come to Coastal. And the Long Bay Symphony will even be here, won't On we? December the 8th, this is going to be our final event for this season. The, uh, the Chamber Orchestra is going to be here on a Sunday afternoon. And I'm real excited to, have, to be able to host the Long Bay Symphony yes. again on the campus. And so that'll have a, uh, there'll be a wide variety of music and holiday themed music for that event. So just come park for the week, the first week of really, December. Just come and stay. Absolutely. <laughs> um, thank you both for joining us. Looking forward to all of that music. Thanks, thank Brian. Thank you. Up next on Coastal Today, a CCU shining student works for more than a good grade on her capstone project. Learn how she's reaching out to help families in need. And later, it's Matt Hogue's Shark to Clear Roundup. We'll be right back. Coastal Carolina University basketball is coming soon and the Shauna Clears are poised for success with a schedule that features 17 home games at the HTC Center, including SEC champion Ole Miss November 16th. Support head coach Cliff Ellis and the Shots as they pursue a big South title. Season tickets start at just $100, less than $6 per game. Call 347-8499 or visit GoCCUSports.com to order your tickets today. Coastal Carolina basketball, the Grand Strands college team. Let's go, let's go. Coastal Carolina University delivers a $300 million impact to our local economy, is responsible for the existence of more than 4,000 jobs, and CCU students, faculty, and alumni positively impact our community's quality of life each day. So no matter your color, the power of teal is undeniable. Learn more about CCU's significant community impact at coastalconnects.com. Your community, your university. is a movie set and my acting career began at Coastal Carolina University. Begin your path to prominence today by applying online. Welcome back. During the holidays we are reminded about the many blessings in our lives. We also recognize that many families are in need right here in our own community. CCU student Nicole Slatke decided to do more than just recognize it. She's working with the CCU Civic Engagement folks to help feed hungry families this Thanksgiving. Nicole, this is part of a capstone project for you, right? Yes, it is. It's part of my communication capstone. Um, tell me what's involved in this project. Um, this project involves um, giving back to families in our local community um, by having student organizations and departments here in the CCU community adopt families for the holiday season. Now, why did you pick this particular um, project? I picked this particular project because um, currently there are 925 million families worldwide um, who do not have food. So there's a lot of people living in poverty and are hungry, so I figured what better way than to give back. Um, now, you've also done this program before, I believe, when you were in high school. I did. Um, I ran it as a high school um, group with our student, it was called Student Leadership Organization. And when you go to the families and really give them the food and see back, like you learn how much you're um, contributing really is helping. Now you're hoping that this CCU adopt a family um, will become part of the CCU tradition here. I really am. I'm hoping that this will be the first annual CCU adopts a family and when I come back I can see um, how much further it's come and hopefully it'll be multiple years running. <laughs> okay so how do we need to help? to make this a success? Um, well, there's definitely ways to get involved. Um, if you're a faculty department or um, student organization on campus, definitely getting involved in adopting family is the first way. Um, but if you aren't in the CCU community and you're still looking to get involved, you can always, um, we're looking for donations in the form of gift cards, money, food, really anything that we can give back to these families in the local area. Now, I believe today, in fact, we've, you brought a basket. I did. Um, the basket is a great example of um, exactly what you can do. And just it's a laundry basket that I filled with a lot of non-perishable items, things like um, mashed potatoes, corn, soup, cereal, um, Pop-Tarts for kids, um, some kids' family food, some adult food, but just things that most people need every day. Now, do we sponsor a basket or you'll take anything or tell me how? 
I will honestly probably take anything. Um, <laughs> I'm really looking for a non-perishable basket and then a turkey for the Thanksgiving right. um, holiday season. But if you are a business owner and you'd like to donate a gift card or sponsor a meal or a family or even just give a donation, I'll accept anything. Um, what is it? What are the numbers that you hope to raise? Um, I'm hoping to raise at least $500 and to adopt 35 families, but I'm hoping that we can even get more than that. That's just the bare minimum that I'd like to do. Um, and I think you'll do it. <laughs> um, Nicole, what is it that makes you want to do these kind of things? Um, you know, I've always been really blessed and I've always had everything I ever wanted and I never had to ask for anything and I couldn't imagine if I was worried about being able to put food um, or eat a meal that night. So that's kind of what makes me want to give back is knowing that I've had the opportunities right. to do these things right. and that everyone really should. Um, what will you do after graduation? Um, hopefully I will have a job in New York City and probably move back up home in New Jersey where I'm from. And what is it that you want to do? Um, I'd like to go into advertising. How wonderful. Um, Nicole, thank you for joining us today. What a wonderful cause. Um, get everybody together, sponsor a basket, sponsor a family. You'll take anything. Yep, anything. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Thank you. When we come back, Civil War history rises to the surface from ocean waters off our coast. You'll meet the CTU Public Safety Deputy Chief, who's diving for cannons. Coastal Carolina University basketball is coming soon and the Chanticleers are poised for success with a schedule that features 17 home games at the HTC Center, including SEC champion Ole Miss November 16th. Support head coach Cliff Ellis and the Shots as they pursue a Big South title. Season tickets start at just $100, less than $6 per game. Call 347-8499 or visit GoCCUSports.com to order your tickets today. Coastal Carolina basketball, the Grand Strands college team. Let's go, let's go. This is a movie set, and my acting career began at Coastal Carolina University. Begin your path to prominence today by applying online. If you're a Civil War buff, you're going to love our next story. The wreck of the Philadelphia was discovered more than 15 years ago off the coast of Cape Romaine. The findings? has resulted in many more findings, cannons dating back 150 years, and the man appointed conservator of the Philadelphia also serves as chief deputy of CCU's Department of Public Safety. Rodney Thomason joins us to share his undersea adventure. So Rodney, you're part of a team of three working to bring up 26 cannons. Um, but let's back up a little bit. Um, I want to talk about how the wreck was first discovered. Okay. Uh, a local fisherman named Rick Skinnyhorn had fished the area for years and years. And uh, as local fishermen do when they travel from spot to spot, they always monitor the bottom. And he hit a spot that held a lot of fish, but it was out in the sand. It was nowhere. Uh, no live bottom, so there shouldn't have been fish there. So he knew in his mind it was some sort of wreck, and he had fished it for a few years and then finally got in touch with Rufus Perdue, who is uh, a local diver and friend of his, and said, come on a fishing trip, I just want to know what's down there. And uh, just by happenstance, uh, Rufus is a historian and he's a local Civil War buff and collects all kind of Civil War memorabilia. He dove on the wreck, and as soon as he got 20 feet underwater, it's in 80 feet of water, and when he got, it was a clear day and a nice day to dive, and he could see the whole layout of the wreck, and the majority of the wreck is uh, railroad iron. And scattered among that railroad iron are these cannons. There's 24 of them, at least, that we know of that are down there. Uh, we have a video of your undersea adventures. Mm -hmm. um, 
this is like a labor of love for you. Mm. Why do you do this, and what is it like to bring up these canyons? What? Cannons. Well, it, it, it was a, it was a challenge. Um, I moved to the, the coast in 1988, and my daughter was an avid. She wanted to get into diving, and it was very expensive. So I got my captain's license, and I would run dive charters. And for and instead of being paid, my daughter and my son would get to scuba dive and learn scuba free. And of course, I learned. And we got to dive two or three times a week and on the weekends. And you know, it wasn't costing me anything because I would run the boat. And we just got really hooked on diving. We enjoy it. And, the family enjoys it. So, so it's the whole family that does it's about the, the only thing a 13 year old at the time and an 18 year old and dad could do and, and it was fun. So. Um, well tell me how you bring up these cannons. And that's another thing that it certainly took a long time. These cannons, are, uh, the majority of them are Columbiads and so they weigh about 13,000 to 13,800 pounds depending on which cannon. So that's almost seven tons. Yes. Yes. It, they're, they're extremely heavy. We tried a number of different uh, ways, but what finally w was successful for us is we would uh, tunnel under them and get a strap under them because you don't want to damage the cannon either, so you have to be careful what you put on them. And they're uh, encrusted because they've been there for so long, so you have to break it loose. So we'd put a lifting bag and break it loose and stand it up. And then I'd put uh, big straps around the trunnions, which is the balance right. point on the cannon and then lay it back down. Now it's ready for the lifting and then we'd come back on another day and we, uh, Rufus is a welder and he welded us up a big lifting bar where we could spread three bags out. These bags are about 6,000 pounds to lift each because you want to be way over. Right. Uh, and then we would spread them out. Uh, 80 feet are about three atmospheres down so as the cannon starts to rise it gains more air and so the bags would, if you filled them to capacity at the bottom, they would explode at the top. So you have to get it to lift without being fully inflated. And, uh, Amazing, it, you're a rigging expert out. as well. Um, thank you for joining us and thank also you for thank you for me. all the great work you do, do here on this campus as Chief Deputy. Well, I certainly appreciate it. Thank you. Up next on Coastal Today, Matt Hodes, Chanticleer Roundup. Coastal Carolina University basketball is coming soon and the Chanticleers are poised for success with a schedule that features 17 home games at the HTC Center, including SEC champion Ole Miss November 16th. Support head coach Cliff Ellis and the Shots as they pursue a Big South title. Season tickets start at just $100, less than $6 per game. Call 347-8499 or visit GoCCUSports.com to order your tickets today. Coastal Carolina basketball, the Grand Strands college team. Let's go, let's go. Coastal Carolina University delivers a $300 million impact to our local economy, is responsible for the existence of more than 4,000 jobs, and CCU students, faculty, and alumni positively impact our community's quality of life each day. So no matter your color, the power of teal is undeniable. Learn more about CCU's significant community impact at coastalconnects.com. Your community, your university. Set. And my acting career began at Coastal Carolina University. Begin your path to prominence today by applying online. As the voice of the Chanticleers, Matt Hogue is on the road, in the press box, and behind the scenes of CCU Sports Action. Let's check in with Matt for this week's Chanticleer Roundup. Certainly through the years, Coastal Carolina Shauna Clears have had a legendary program, a lot of success producing MLS stars such as Joe and Guinea and many more. And this year, Coach Sean Docking, who joins me, has his team ranked in the top 10 yet again. And Coach, it has been a familiar refrain with what you've done with this program. The names have changed through the years, but the success is still at the same high standard. I know it's something you're very pleased with, the program that you've been able to uh, build here. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're just trying to get better every year, like everybody else in the country, um, <laughs> you know, and uh, you just, you continually recruit, you continually work on player development, um, 
and and you you learn from each other. There's a lot of great coaches and great programs around the country, and you know I love to just pick brains and you know constantly try to better what we're doing through other guys and just different avenues of soccer. So I think that's been the enjoyment with what we've tried to do here over the last you know. 10, 15 years. Talking to one of the stars of the Shauna Clear program, uh, Ricky Garbanzo, who has had a, a terrific season. And Ricky, you've had a chance to play now in this program on several very good teams the last few years. Size up how this team looks this year to you. I think we're a better team this year. I feel like we got a more connected team, as in everyone puts in the work at the same time. And uh, opportunity, like we don't have a main goal scorer, but we all contribute to the goal scoring opportunities and we capitalize on those. Describe uh, Sean Docking's system, what his style of soccer is. His style is mostly just attractive style, usually combination play up to the attacking and then defensively we all track back, get our man and win the ball and try to counterattack, which we have done decently this this season. And then the final word about your program as you talk to student athletes that may be looking at Coastal Carolina, what is unique about your brand of soccer or the style that you like to play that you think would be attractive to a potential recruit? Well, I, I think um, college soccer gets, um, doesn't get enough credit for uh, the player development process that we go through. I think College soccer is, is an incredibly good environment to help prepare these guys to play at the next level. And I think it plays an integral part of professional soccer in this country. Um, you, you will see that uh, many, many MLS teams uh, have got guys that have played at a good college, college level. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the best players in the MLS have, have gone on to play or, or started in the college ranks. So, you know, we're a part of that process, I believe, here. You know, we're trying to do the same thing. We're trying to produce guys that maybe can go on and play at the next level. For 16 years, he's been doing that here at Coastal Carolina University. Sean Docking, the all-time winningest coach here at Coastal Carolina in soccer. It has been a nationally dominant program. And certainly, uh, check out more at GoCCUSports.com. Thanks, Matt, and thank you for joining us. Coastal Today would love to hear from you. Send an email with any comments or suggestions to coastaltoday at coastal.edu. And you can view Coastal Today on our website at coastal.edu forward slash coastal today. Thanks for watching Coastal Today, an inside look at Coastal Carolina University.